There's something wrong with telling boys and telling young men that they should cry for the sake of crying or that it's inherently a virtue to cry. It's not. It's inherently a good thing to bridle your emotions, to moderate your own instincts instead of just acting on them. And I would say it's an inherently good thing to teach young men to be vulnerable with the people they trust and they love. That's toxic masculinity. My club's for closers. Let's talk about toxic masculinity. I think this is something that's that's been tossed around quite a bit, and Cortez has talked about this, so it seems fitting. Um, I was at the vet this week, and you know, I'm hoping this is one thing. The vet stuff always, I think Joe Rogan and Kevin Smith were talking about this. The dog stuff always gets me, so hopefully I'm not going to be uh, too emotional. But I was at the vet this week. Everything's kind of okay, but it's been, it's been rough with the, the chemo treatment. Again, I appreciate the, uh, the kind words of support. Um, but I was there at this emergency vet on Saturday, and while I was waiting there in the, uh, the waiting room, there was this 15-year-old girl. Um who was crying. Um, and it's one of those things I will, I will genuinely never forget this girl's face. I actually, I feel things really deeply, but I'm socially very awkward. People who've probably met me, sometimes they're surprised, like when we do a change of my mind or do the show, it's like, oh, I would have thought this would be a little bit more outgoing. Whereas my dad was with me and uh, he knows the right thing to say. So this, this girl was, was, was crying she was very upset and I said hey uh, yeah what's 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 going on and she said I had to br brought in my 14 uh, year old dog and she had a seizure and she was she was crying she couldn't I mean just tears streaming down her face and I said oh yeah you know that's that's kind of tough and talked about what we were kind of going through with with um with Hopper and the cancer treatment and I didn't know what to say I kind of just just fizzled out and uh my dad saved it and said like hey do you want do you want some water he took some water from the, the fridge there and he said hey I'm buying because it was free water and she kind of laughed she was wearing a sweater um, that uh, said Canada on it. I think it's one of those Roots sweaters mm -hmm. as a company. And so we asked her if she was from Canada. She was from upstate New York. Um, and she forgot about it for a little bit. She stopped crying for a little bit. She was very awkward, this girl, too. Frizzy hair. Um, probably someone who, who was very, very close with her dog. Probably the kind of person who maybe had a deeper connection with her dog uh, than, than most people. I know I had deeper connections with animals as a kid sometimes than I did with people because I didn't, I didn't know how to relate to them. Um, and so I'm trying to f find a way to get into this. Again, I'm trying to keep my emotions in check. Uh, when we were leaving, we were okay. And as I was, to kind of give you an idea what this looks like, I'm trying to see if you can see scope. There's a wall divide and there's a glass door. And so there's a little bit of a cutout where, you know, you pay for your you pay for whatever service is rendered. And I can see her on the other side of this wall through a glass door, the 15 year old girl. And at this point she was, she was sobbing, but after we spoke with her, she was seemed a little bit better. She was looking things up on her phone, um, a little more talkative in the waiting room. And I sent my dad out uh, with the crate to our car. We pulled the car around and I saw her mom and there was no dad there. Um, so I can see both sides of this dividing wall. And I saw her mom talking to the vet, uh, and I overheard her saying, um, how does this work with a, a 14, 15 year old girl? Is she going to hold her? Um, and the vet said, well, you know, it depends if you think she's most comfortable doing that. Um, and it's one of those things where I'm in this position where I can see effectively that this girl's whole world is about to become unglued. Um, and I didn't sleep at all that night. I, I, all I could see was her face all night long. It was unbelievably hard. And I gathered myself. I walked through the, the, the glass door. One another said, well, I said, hey, uh, uh, really love your sweater. Um, you know, God, God bless. Hope, hope, hope you have a good night. And she said, oh, thank you. You know, and she was, she was smiling. I, made, I can't remember. I made some kind of a joke and walked out. Um, that's what toxic masculinity is. And let me explain what that means. We don't show our emotions all the time. We're all constantly accused of you're not showing your emotions because of a toxically masculine culture. Um, it's not because we're afraid of being teased or because we're afraid of feeling. In that instance, uh, I walked out to my car, by the way, with my dad and I cried. Uh, I, I, it, was, it was absolutely heartbreaking. But I knew that in that moment, that wasn't going to help her. 
That's toxic masculinity. Why did I go out there? And even if it's just a laugh for 20 seconds before I know she's gonna have to hold her 14 year old dog before they put it down, why would it matter? Why would I go out there and try to be strong? I know it sounds silly for this 15 year old girl because if even for 15 seconds, I can protect a girl like that from, from pain. And it's the same thing with our family members, with our wives, with our daughters, with our sisters. This is why men act the way that we do. It's because we love you. It's because we want to protect you. We hate to see people in pain. We hate to see the people that we love in pain. That's toxic masculinity. I'll tell you this, I just, I wanted to give this girl a, a hug and I know, I know I can't because, you know, of course it would be inappropriate, but um, I felt so bad for her and there was, a, there was no dad present. Doesn't mean that there wasn't a dad. Doesn't mean that she doesn't have a dad, but it was that much more heartbreaking. Again, it's this carnal, this primal reactions, visceral reactions that a man will have if there is a woman who is vulnerable, who is exposed, and there is no man there to help her. That's toxic masculinity. And you might say, oh, it's the damsel in distress syndrome. Fine. Okay. I'm okay with it. It's in our nature to protect and to provide, just as it's in your nature, women, to nurture, care for. Okay. We want to prevent pain for you at all costs. And by the way, this is, I understand this, ironically, Sometimes that leads to us causing pain, right? We get so stressed out over trying to provide to protect, uh, whether it's work, whether it's trying to be strong emotionally, that we end up lashing out at those who we live to provide for, who we live to protect. Just like women ironically end up suffocating the people they love sometimes or spoiling them with, ch with children. It's in our nature and it needs to be rattled. That's toxic masculinity. But I don't think that it's a nature that should be condemned just because it's a part of our genetic makeup. Um, it would be emotionally selfish. It would be incredibly emotionally selfish. You know, I came back home that night too. I came back to my wife, brought the dogs in, um, and she was obviously very, everything was, was, was fine, but she was obviously very worried. And I made sure that when I came in, kind of had an even, even keeled temper, explained what went, what happened, what was, where we gonna have to give the dog antibiotics. And once she was settled, about 30 minutes after that, she asked me, she said, well, what, what's wrong? What's, what's bothering you? And that's when I told her what I had experienced with the 15 year old girl, that they were going to put the dog down. And at that point in time, because I had made sure that my wife was taken care of before myself, that's toxic masculinity, by the way. And that's a biblical notion. The idea of esteeming others first, of treating your wives and your women as the best among you. By the way, that wasn't an ideal. When we talk about where do we get morals from, the idea of mercy, what, it wasn't really considered a virtue in a lot of societies until modern Christendom. The idea of treating your wives as the best among you, the idea of treating your wives with love, and I get it, they're gonna, people will say, well, what about submit to your husbands? Yeah, okay, it talks about men loving your wives. That was actually kind of unique when Christ came around. This is just me talking about my worldview. Once I had made sure that my wife was taken care of, that I had quelled any, any fears or anxieties she had, I told her about what had happened. And at that point, guess what? It was fine for me to be vulnerable with my wife. It was fine for me to shed a tear and explain something that was uh, deeply impactful and hurtful. And my wife would never condemn me for it. And that's because we have an open, complementary relationship where we understand each other's needs and do our best to meet them as members of the opposite sex. That's toxic masculinity. This idea that men just, re by the way, the idea that, that, that expressing, Jordan Peterson has talked about this, just expressing emotions is somehow inherently helpful. It's not true. Let me give you those examples right there. You know how I felt when I saw that 15 year old girl? I wanted to cry. I felt terrible. I wanted to, I, I wanted to go into hysterics. You don't think men feel that? Of course, would it help her? No, it would be selfish. When I came home, it was late, I was tired, I felt this cold coming down, or flu, whatever the hell it is, Ebola czar, uh, Ebola SARS, what is czar, SARS, whatever Zika. that was. We had Zika, Zika was a thing, swine sexy flu. You don't think I would love to come in and go, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe the night I had. But that would be emotionally selfish, and so I ensured that I came in and said, okay, sweetheart, how are you? Let me explain this to you. Everything's okay. I love you. Are you secure? All right. Here's an emotional need that I have right now when she asked. There's an appropriate time to express emotion. And it's not becoming of a young man to do that. There's nothing wrong with men crying. Okay? There's something wrong with telling boys and telling young men that they should cry for the sake of crying or that it's inherently a virtue to cry. It's not. It's inherently a good thing to bridle your emotions, 
to moderate your own instincts instead of just acting on them. And I would say it's an inherently good thing to teach young men to be vulnerable with the people they trust and they love, like their wives, like their families. That's toxic masculinity. There's this idea that people talk about quite a bit uh, as though men either have to live into this archetype of big dumb jock or the sensitive artistic type who cries. Do you realize it's a very new thing? Look at the readings of, of, of Teddy Roosevelt or even uh, Abraham Lincoln. These were people who were artistic. These were people who often were musically inclined, people who would, who would paint, people who would write poetry. And then they were incredibly intelligent and physically robust. You were not, com you were not considered a complete man unless all of these facets made up your masculinity. That's toxic masculinity. It broke apart, really, with modern uh, progressive feminism. I hate to beat a dead horse here, but that's where we really separated people with the sexual revolution. And honestly, it just made it easier for scumbags to get laid. Let's be honest, that one's not working out really well for women. The original term, I've talked about this before and I'll leave you with this, was, uh, you've, heard this you've heard this expression, jack of all trades, master of none. It was originally jack of all trades, master of one meaning you were expected to be a jack of all trades, adequate, passable in all facets of life, and to be a master of one domain. That's what would tr make a truly great person, a truly great artist, truly great at anything, but that's what makes a truly great man as well. That's when we talk about toxic masculinity and we throw the baby out with the bathwater, we're throwing out everything that has created modern medicine, this uh, Western civilization that has served, protected, and provided for women throughout centuries. Men want to do that. That's toxic masculinity. We want to provide for you. We want to protect you. That's toxic masculinity. And sometimes it comes with some shit that you don't want. That's what happens. But we condemn and you take, this is what worries me too, is this generation of boys that we have now going out there. We, you know, you, you've talked, we've talked about incels. That's a very small microcosm of it. But imagine an entire generation. Now really we're going on two generations of boys who've been told that all of their instincts, all of their hardwiring is wrong and toxic, they're going to be afraid to be who they are. We can't, how do you, how do you juxtapose that? Where you say, hey, yeah, to masculine, it's toxic masculinity. This idea that you don't want to cry, this idea that you want to be tough, this idea that you want to be athletic, this idea that you want to be great, this idea that you want to be competitive, that's toxic. Don't, don't engage any of those instincts that you have. By the way, keep it real. Can you understand what kind of a conflicted message that is to send young men? And I'm hoping that there are some women watching this, particularly some, some young feminist women who maybe haven't peered behind the curtain, who maybe haven't understood what it is that makes young men tick. We love, we care, and we are just as emotional, and we don't act on it because we love you. That's toxic masculinity. Hey there, here I am uh, drinking from my mug in a button down. How often do you see this? Never. So. Do me a favor and yourself, click one of these videos playing one of these boxes here, or uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell also, because subscriptions don't really mean a whole lot. If you really want to support the show, join my club. If you don't, then there's no helping you.